It says leaders are not born but made and there is no one size that fits all. But with enough grit and a mental makeup that can really help organizations and individuals really grapple things that we have seen in the recent past, which may extend from a recession to a great resignation and now another recession. So we've really been through a lot as an ecosystem and what has helped the difference or the change is the leaders that we have. Today, I have with me a very interesting person on this podcast, K.S. Vishwanathan, or KSV as we all know him, is an industry veteran. He has over 40 years of experience within the ecosystem and has seen it right from a GCC to a services company to now an industry building body. So everything is under his belt and KSV is a wealth of knowledge and I'm extremely happy Thank and privileged so to have you here today, KSV. Good, Good speaking to you, Nitika. Lovely speaking to you. And KSV, the first thing I want to ask, like I said, you've been here a part of the ecosystem for four decades. Uh, I wanted to understand what are some of the watershed moments in the history of this ecosystem that you think have been very, very key to the outcomes that we have achieved till date? It's a very interesting question. When I trace back to the early 80s, awareness of what computers could do was less. There were a handful of people who were very knowledgeable, very large set of people who were absolutely no clue what could be done. And the concept of software as alien, it was largely hardware. And we all grew up in a non-PC era, mainframe era, mini computer era, etc. And as I said, the community was clear. They will use computing for solving scientific and technology solutions. And it took time before the business solution took up. I still fondly recollect there are many good things we did as an industry then. One, of course, is the government of India creating an Rangarajan committee to see what should be the technology roadmap for banking industry in the country. Fortunately or otherwise, Rangarajan committee had recommended it should be a Motorola 68000 processor based system and an Unix based operating system will be the guiding principle on which could be done. That triggered off the entire ecosystem moving towards Unix, moving towards Java, moving towards C++. That came much handy to us when the Y2K opportunities came in to fix it up programming. So one watershed moment was uh, creating an opportunity for Y2K. Even before that, presence of some of the multinational corporations like GE, companies like American Express, etc. The leaders had a vision to say that what could be done from India. The consideration largely being cost. Y2K was one big game-changing opportunity. And before that, a handful of multinational corporations having that feeling that perhaps as the world is going to move towards a networking world, there could be a plenty of available talent here at an affordable lower cost, whatever you may call it that time as a back office. And they said, let's attempt it. So companies like GE, companies like American Express, companies like British Airways, they all experimented. And once they started experimenting, other companies started following up. For example, in early 2000, Dell would be one example. Dell said, how do we leverage the technical capacity in India, perhaps on a low-cost basis, to serve the international customers? When Dell came in, subsequently, their partner ecosystem like Intel and Microsoft started coming in, and the entire thing completely changed. That gave the initial momentum. For example, companies like Texas Instruments in 1985-86, deciding, saying that, let me attempt doing a remote engineering watershed moment. Even in a company like HCL and Wipro, when they knew that liberalization was happening, when the imports were getting easier and the hardware is getting cheaper while importing, they're converting their laboratory of R&D into a global R&D, showcasing capabilities to do a fault-tolerant computer system or a compiler, etc. completely transformed. This is one watershed moment. Second watershed moment, I would say, is I'm saying the industry all joining together, creating NASCOM. Because you just imagine back in... 87, 88, we all knew there's an opportunity for software and services coming in. We didn't know what form and shape it is going to take place. And the industry leaders joined together, founders joined together, about 25 of them, says together we went. We create opportunities locally with policy initiatives and compete during the night time. 
in India for the business outside. So that was a second watershed moment. I'm not exaggerating this, but any book, any anyone you wrote at it, if there's one institution that made the difference would be NASCOM as an entity. And third is a huge role, huge role played by government. Government, both the central government and state government, many changes, watershed moment. Uh, for example, creation of STPI, creation of software technology parks of India to enable connectivity, enable multiple smaller companies who cannot afford an VSAT connectivity themselves to go operate and build it up is one. Or VSNL agreeing to build a data network. Initially, the VSNL, VSNL felt the telephone network is only for voice. And it took effort in the industry to convince them to go beyond voice to data. So, movement towards data. And the third which got enabled watershed movement, I would say, fairly, I would say in year 2000 onwards, that era of growth of internet. Era of growth of internet, data, voice to data conversion, STPI creation, NASCOM creation, Y2K opportunities. All those things are nice enablers, but things have again changed. Now when I look at the watershed movement, if we look at 2010-20, is a startup. The startup innovation ecosystem. And I would say even from the point of view of 2010 onwards, rapid increase into the concept of uh, digitization and digital acceleration and more and more multinational corporations wanting to set up their capability center and everybody wanting to accelerate the digitization strategy what has been created. A similar opportunity in an other scale was available to possibly 175 more countries in 1999-2000. This country took advantage with that and reaping the benefit. Just to end this part of the conversation, today our total exports end of March 2022, which is at 178 billion US dollars, is more than the total export that Saudi Arabia does for oil. And this 178 billion accounts for about 59% of the total export from India is accounted by IT. 53% of the total outsourcing market globally is given to India. So all these things are done because fundamentally, the leaders felt collaboratively we win. And that spirit is time. And as I collaboratively move from industry to academia, academia to government, today we are one large ecosystem difficult to break. That is fantastic to hear. Very positive to see how different players have come together to really drive it to where it is. But you brought in a very interesting point, right? You said 53% of all of outsourcing lies in India. And right now, governments have moved into a very strong protectionist regime. In this case, like the likes of COVID, etc. What would that mean in terms of de-risking? For global organizations as well because I think that is going to be a fear for a lot of people. Covid did bring about a huge change, huge change in mindset. Uh, in the past they were worried how will a job get done 7,000 miles away without me, without being in office etc. In India in the last two and a half years the work got completed even perhaps even getting completed now from 300 odd different locations. A. B. COVID generated the momentum, momentum for contactless systems. COVID did generate for more database decision making. People have consumed what they could consume from IT in a traditional ones. Now they realize technology powered the business during COVID time. The reason I'm saying this is, this is accelerating momentum for digital acceleration. Further got accentuated by COVID. Last five years, People are getting their online strategy right. People are getting the web commerce strategy right. People are getting the mobile commerce strategy right. People are getting their cyber security strategy right. We all have been getting done. And this is like an aircraft flying. Engine is giving faulty. You have no time to come down and repair down and fly again. again. While the aircraft is in, they're changing it. That is a rapid. This is generating huge demand for digital talent. Huge demand for scalable talent. Huge demand for relearning talent which is required, like talent at various level. With that being the driver, the, while the protectionism make from India is increasing, the make from their own country is increasing, there is also a conversation going on, how do we get talent mobility, right? I, I agree with you in, in, a, in a true sense, the true globalization is happening now. You could have part of your services rendered from Philippines. Part of your services rendered from Mexico, part of your center rend services rendered from, say, Poland, somewhere else in Romania, part of the work done from South Africa, 
bulk of the data related people here and that kind of composite capability to solve a digitization challenge is so huge perhaps we'll have a huge tailwind for next three to five years for sure in the past globalization was concerned in terms of trade and now the globalization is everything trade plus geopolitics is not equal so i'm going to then ask you i know you talked about a whole digital transformation wave that's happening and you talked about the true globalization right you said it's not just going to be in india but we looked back retrospectively we said these are the different watershed moments based on what you know you talked about a whole digital transformation wave that's happening and you talked about the true globalization right you said we have a runway for the next three to five years but what is the watershed moments in your opinion based on historical data what will be the next big watershed moments for this country and for globalization fantastic question let me rephrase it thanks to many success what indian it industry what tech industry did if we trace back from 2014 2015 onwards the entire digitization strategy in india is built around citizen centric public digital platform citizen centric platform whether it is aadhaar which got created leveraging aadhaar to upi solution system leveraging upi the jam yojana upi leveraging upi aadhaar and say creating a health mission setup creating that leveraging a learning system helping that building and soil card system everything has been built on citizen centric public digital infrastructure that is our hallmark of success uh, the payment solution that we created through upi many countries are now attempting to replicate what could be done perhaps the healthcare system that we developed for giving 2 billion vaccines in 12 15 months time it was a platform perhaps several other african countries and amer south american countries the platform is being shared that is our hallmark of globalization that is a hallmark of digitization and best is yet to come we have talked about open standards open interface open digital commerce platform through ondc perhaps a similar thing which the union it industry said education is another area could be done so we have done healthcare we have done perhaps retail we'll do uh, education could be one multiple standards multiple public digital infrastructure that is going to be india's contribution could generate huge demand globally for globalization So one key component or the player of this entire globalization arc is the GCCs and we have over 1500 GCCs already in India and as you're aware there are many conversations of newer GCCs setting up in India what is the difference between GCCs that set up 10 years ago and GCCs that are setting up shop today I think that GCCs have evolved for a period of last 30 years now uh, I would love to call we are in the third generation of gcc when the gcc model did kick start perhaps in uh, 2000 to 2010 if i put that phase the driver was largely productivity largely productivity and the leaders were running it had to spend time to create an identity for themselves why are we here am i a delivery guy am i mean to just lift and shift what was being done at perhaps one third the cost one fourth the cost cost was a driver productivity was a measurement and that is where it could occur that generation of leaders demonstrated how it could be done gave confidence and they earned trust it took 7 to 10 years to earn trust for the gcc model to evolve that i can go beyond productivity and they were trusted with perhaps looking at more enterprise capability whether in terms of talent augmentation whether in terms of supporting the product design capabilities put together if i had to refer to an Zinov report while large portion of people have moved into that second phase that called for a different kind of leadership now when i look back last 10 years the leadership that is required is completely different kind as i said as a prominent gcc leader once told me when they set up a gcc first 10 years they're exploring what to do from india then when they got the story right they accelerated in the next 10 years to add a significantly 100 times a increase in their headcount and today they say what should not be done from india everything can be done from india so the the gcc have evolved to be a trusted entity gcc have evolved to be a mature entity except that as i said people today don't give 10 years time they don't give 5 years time perhaps in 18 to 24 months time they are expected to do a setup setup expected to ramp up expected to innovate and get ready for 
the being ready to the parent enterprises a in the past people used to experiment let me get my first 500 people in 3 years time then we think that is all given that's all given and second good thing which is happening is in the past the success was being measured in terms of FTE count and the uh, people count you had. Absolutely. That measurement matrix to GC security is completely different. changed. Completely changed. Yes. Those are the changes. I wouldn't say that it is different. It is evolved. We ask me, where is it going to evolve? Is the concept of a GCC and a parent headquarters will disappear. It will completely disappear. I, I'll give an example, very interesting. I was listen, recently with one of the GCC. He says, uh, I, I was very busy with an attending a conference. I said, what conference? He said, in the past, in the technology conference, uh, uh, semiconductor company, cloud company, etc., they will all meet in US. The leader from India will go attend that and find out how to dovetail what is required. Interestingly, all the leaders of this company talked about companies like NVIDIA, companies like NetApp, companies like uh, VMware, etc. They all have the conference in Bangalore. And all the leaders from abroad come and say, and how do we collaborate together? Because I Another example where the things of future, larger collaboration taking place is I heard about two years back in one of the Zenov conference, uh, 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 Wells Fargo has got a center in India. Wells Fargo's partner is Broadridge. Broadridge has got a partner in India. Okay. Broadridge utilizes Oracle as a technology. Okay. Or Oracle has got part, I want to say India perhaps in the five square miles distance of Bangalore in one location. <laughs> so every time Wells Fargo has a problem, they relate it here. When they relate back to the related Broadridge, Broadridge related here. Broadridge points to Oracle gets related here. So why can't we create a cycle time reduction by local collaboration itself here? That's the way I'm saying the ecosystem for various GCCs are getting built in India for local collaboration. Ability to manage a naturally evolved ecosystem, an extended ecosystem, the biggest, biggest child and the service providers and the startup and the academia, the way you all collaborated, will be an expected leadership trade expected from the new GCC. So that's a very interesting point, right? So partnerships, collaborations, alliances, is that going to be a fundamental differentiator for a GCC leader that has higher maturity versus a GCC leader that is not so high on the maturity curve as on date? Absolutely, yes. The leaders, GCCs are learning. They are not visualizing a five-year cycle and ten-year cycle to get, I've got my learnings done now. In five years, they're experimenting. The need for digitization is yesterday. Perhaps in 18 to 24 months' time, they have to get it done. They also know, they also know everything cannot be done by the center alone in India. They require the local Absolutely. ecosystem, distributed ecosystem. For me, that leadership that you talk about, that is a hallmark for successful metrics, what is tech here. What we know is announced data, about Mercedes-Benz creating that MBOS as a platform, various navigation system, entertainment system, ecosystem that is required, the startup ecosystem required is completely different, but connected ecosystem in automobile, as driver-assisted system in the automobile. In automobile, for example, uh, they already delayed the launch of a software-driven vehicle by five years. Everybody is now saying, cramming up for talent to build it done, that is all happening here. So I'm going to ask you a very controversial question. Now we've talked about things that are very positive for the ecosystem. What is built on illusions in this ecosystem? We are talent rich, leadership deficient. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, by nature, we come from a compliance, hierarchical kind of culture, kind of society we come from. We are largely become an American way of working. So perhaps there is a cultural integration of Asian way of working, European way of integration. So to expect that everything is like a go magic band, we go, it just tear it around, it's going to it'll take time. The reason I'm saying this is for the next set of GCC leaders who are coming to invest, while we're ready to serve you, but please have that cushion of 18 months, 24 months time to stabilize. That illusion that I start today in 24 months time things V1 is one. And secondly, in the when you the illusion is while we are also learning, the globally everybody is learning, globalization isn't two-way process. The leaders in India have to demonstrate trust and maturity. The leaders there also should have that capability that that center, that person can do it. So those two, if we can make those beat those illusion points, things will be 
I'm much more accelerated than what I'm saying. So, KSV, you talked about two different constructs. You talked about one construct where you said there are obviously new companies that are setting up shop in India. So if there was a piece of advice, and obviously leaders being a key component in being able to drive that outcome, if there was some piece of advice that you, or the top three pieces of advice you had to give to a company setting up shop in India, looking to find the right leader to scale their center, what is the three sets of things in terms of what you would give them? No, before identifying the leader, once advice I'll give to the GCC who want to set up it, have an at least three to five years clarity on what your vision for an identity for your center in India going to be. If you are still looking for productivity or talent, etc., then you get a kind of leadership which is available in terms of several delivery managers or done project managers, program management capabilities you'll get. If your vision is the center is to build innovation capabilities, digital transformation capabilities is my goal for next three to five years, you require a different kind of leaders. The different kind of leaders is a bit entrepreneurial, who is so confident, self-confident. If you can get that kind of leadership, things will get accelerated very quickly for you. And third, which is important is one beyond identity, one in terms of what you would love to do, uh, right from the beginning, right from the beginning, have a collaborative, successful, metrics driven, uh, give as much as ownership to the local leadership to execute, yet based on service parameters, success parameters defined, that works well. So that will work well the three things we'll say for a successful GC perspective. From a leadership perspective, again as I said, uh, demonstrate leadership maturity. We are leadership deficient nation, right? We can perhaps count in 100, 200 leaders out of the 1,500 GCCs who have exhibited the capability to have a right conversation at the corner seat, right? Beyond that, the challenges are bound to be there. How do we go beyond that to a mature trust leadership, the leadership who can take the change management well, leadership who can take the team well, perhaps is suited to work very strongly in matrix organization. That's the four things I would say. So, KSV, you talked about new companies that are looking to set up shop, but there are a lot of people who are already well entrenched in the ecosystem, have been doing things a certain way. What is the top three things that you would recommend to leaders who are here in the lower stages of maturity and who need to leapfrog into higher order value? It's again a great question, Nitika. Many of the companies were set up perhaps 10 years, 15 years back are waking up to new reality. In the past, they'll be largely confined to themselves that we can do it ourselves. Now slowly realizing the power of collaborating with external ecosystem is one. Uh, external ecosystem, whether it's in startup adaptation or getting their entire cloud strategy ready, information security strategy ready, what could be done is one. So one way to look at it is extensively collaborate with an external ecosystem is one thing I will do. Be fair and consume and contribute the thought leadership on how the new ones are building successful enterprises and how you can contribute to their success and learn from the model to do it. Lots of forums available in the country, run by NASCOM, run by you, uh, Zinov, etc. Leverage in all these platforms, take part, uh, see that as an investment of time to make it available. The second thing which will succeed. And the third thing as a thing is, which we talked about earlier, build on a platform of collaborative leadership for all of us. I would say that things are improving, accelerate. If the, the current leaders can accelerate the thinking, Everybody looks at them for solution. They have a voice makers. They can bring the change. So, KSV, I'm going to then ask you a harder question here because a big thing that we hear as we speak to all the leaders in the ecosystem is that the power always resides close to market. And while we have the engineering centers here, we don't necessarily have the market in India. That is a constant deterrent we hear on leadership. What should leaders here do to change that mindset? I'll put it other way around. I tend to disagree I agree with you, large portion of it. Uh, as you would notice in the last five years, especially got accelerated in the last two years, even in the manufacturing product engineering space, the product is getting more and more intelligent. Product is getting more and more embedded. Product is getting more and more security. In short, the market is moving towards softwareization, right? 
even in some of the places where the market could be elsewhere, the product manufacturing could be elsewhere, the softwareization, the center of gravity is clearly here, clearly here. The leadership role, what they can do is enlarge, leverage, support, and bring forth the softwareization component capabilities, what we have, ready to do it, and collaborate and co-create with your market-facing role together they can succeed. I can give you examples, especially in the manufacturing space. In the past, people used to keep their softwareization component also close to where the manufacturing was there. The manufacturing was set up where the market was, right? Now with geopolitical changes which is happening, people are now saying, at least protect my software. The product be there together again. I'll give an example. Uh, Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz, India is not the market for large value-based car, but large portion of the software is completely in India. And perhaps they don't, they have not seen the super luxury car gets them. But proudly, the CEO announces every luxury car in the world has been touched by an Indian. So those are the ways the leadership profile from India has built the message that we can do it. They can work collaboratively has made the difference. Great. So any, thank you KSV for this extremely interesting conversation. I think uh, we have a bunch of things we discussed, but the things that came on top was collaboration, being able to create strategic alliances. We've done this very well historically, but as an ecosystem, if we do it with the leadership component, it is something that will be a game changer, not just for us as an ecosystem, but the implication that we have to be a truly globalized setup. So thank you all for listening in to this very interesting podcast episode.